This week on the Computer Chronicles Online Games, we'll show you how to find the latest and coolest games in cyberspace. We'll give you a tour of Microsoft's Internet Gaming Zone and a visit to the TGL, where gamers now go when they turn pro. Plus, a look at the first action game designed specifically for the Internet and a great new web game in which the action counts since it's real people against real people. Also, a visit to an online gaming tournament to play Magic the Gathering. Plus, my pick of the week, a new way to interact with your computer. It's all coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by SoftSource Incorporated, publishers of Pro One Software, educational software for young adults, and by Z Auction, the live online shopping experience. Additional funding from PC Connection and Mac Connection, the catalog and online superstore with PC and Mac products, toll-free technical support, and overnight delivery and by Windows Magazine, delivering desktop, enterprise, and internet computing news, reviews, features, and how-tos for a Windows world. Because the world runs on Windows. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. Well, computer games have been around for a long time. Even the concept of online games have been around for a while. But boy, has the world of online gaming changed over the past year with new games, new game zones, new technology that is really revolutionizing the world of computer gaming on the net. Peter, you do Gamers Extreme, which is a mm -hmm. website for guys who are into online gaming. What is so different? What is so exciting about online gaming compared to all those CD-ROMs we've been playing on a PC for years? Well, Stuart, um, really the chief advantage in online games is that it allows you to play versus another human player. And you're not limited by the artificial intelligence that are built into single player games. And so, are so, you smarter, faster than another real guy, not just some program? Absolutely. And so, the element of competition versus someone else comes in, as opposed to, uh, say, beating a computer game, right. which is pre programmed to do certain things and beca can become very predictable yeah. at times. All right, now we've got Quake, a game uh, of Quake going on right now. And this is what? Describe what we're seeing here, Peter. Well, what you're seeing here is two people playing Quake in uh, what's known as a rocket battle. Um, really, we chose this to show you because it really demonstrates how quickly and how fast this game can move. Uh, most people are familiar with, you know, yeah, so you're watching a guy Quake. play Quake on a PC. I mean, uh -huh. you're wandering around looking for an enemy and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. You shoot somebody with a shotgun twice, they die. Yeah. And you can contrast that with what we're seeing here. So these icons we're seeing representing guys who are online right now banging away on their on their Absolutely. keyboards. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is a fast, fast game. Uh huh. And you can you can tell that like you know these guys are just going off and uh, trying to kill each other basically <laughs> online. And um, there's a lot more satisfaction, you know, and a lot more challenge <laughs> in doing something like that when there's somebody there to actually say, look, you know, I've beaten you as opposed and to... And in fact, like, that game we're watching there, one of those players was one of the best players in the world, right? Yeah, actually, one of the players there, his name is B2, and uh, he is, um, he works with me, and he's one of the best Quake players in the world right, right. now. All right, now, the question I have is, how can the internet, slow internet, handle real-time, you know, Twitch-type games like this in which the action is so fast? Well, you know, really, that is still a problem right now. A lot of people um, can't really play these games sometimes right. because, you know, they are limited by bandwidth and You know, latency. what we were watching, what kind of lines were these guys on? Those were, that was actually on a LAN, a local area ah, network, when okay. there was a direct okay. connection between but the But if computers. I were on a 28 I can't do that. It would be a little bit more choppy, yeah. and you would have to, um, you know, predict a little bit more. It might be a little bit more frustrating because it would, you know, el the game would freeze at times, yeah. and you wouldn't be yeah. able to tell exactly what's happening. And so, you know, uh, in Twitch games, like you said, this is, you know, the, uh, a half a second or a delay like that could mean, you know, the difference between winning and losing. And this is getting real serious. I mean, these guys who play these games are becoming stars, celebrities in their own right. Absolutely, yes. We're starting to see professional gaming now where um, I believe the first professional league has started. It's called uh -huh, the PGL, right. and $250,000 is on the line in the first year alone. Wow. And so, well, What's the next step going to be, and how do we solve this latency problem that it's inherently difficult to play an action game on the web? Well, really, I think it's going to be uh, solved as the infrastructure gets better, um, you know, for the home users around mm -hmm. the nation. Uh, we're starting to see that uh, with the, you know, the X2 modems that are coming out, as well as the ISDN lines, right. and uh, cable really, modems. and cable modems will yeah. be huge. The bandwidth available there will be great. All right, and this is your world, huh? Yes, this Peter, is where I live. Peter, thank you. 
All right, well, you've no doubt heard of the NFL, the NBA, and the PGA. As you just heard, there's now something called the PGL, the Professional Gamers League, a new organization created to promote a competitive money-making league for professional computer gamers. We visited the launch of the PGL, appropriately enough, held at 3Com Park here in San Francisco. Uh, the inventor of At a recent news conference, Advanced Micro Devices and the Total Entertainment Network announced the formation of the Professional Gamers League, or PGL. The appointed commissioner was no less than the father of computer games, Nolan Bushnell. The league's mission is to set the ground rules for an international association offering prizes and structured competition for computer game players. It was more than us saying create it that players were saying we need to have something like this. In the advent of any new sport, you got people that want to compete. And they don't want to compete against just anyone, they want to compete against the best players in the world. PGL will offer generous incentives for top players to turn pro, such as cash prizes of $250,000, fame and sponsor endorsements. In short, all the perks that any football or baseball player would expect. But alongside the mercenary awards, PGL is hoping to create a foundation for a new type of gameplay that is a combination of the future and the past. I believe that AI, man against the machine, is okay. But it's really more fun man against man, man against woman, woman against woman, people. We are social beings, and our gameplay historically has been social. And I believe that through the network we can bring them social again, even though the sociality may be separated by thousands of miles. The PGL wants to create online tournaments with potentially hundreds of thousands of players. And like the major sports events played on courts and on diamonds, these will be spectator sports as well, with a twist. Instead of watching the football, you can become the football. Instead of watching Joe Mantrena, you can see what Joe sees. You can see where he glances. And, and that's exciting to me. For top players, the PGL is an opportunity to create a vast online community of committed gamers and a magnet for the best. The publicity is definitely good. You know, it'll bring the game more into the mainstream, where you know it's more accepted into the you know just the average person. And you know, it also brings more players because you know they want to be in the spotlight. They want a chance to be, you know, famous or you know win a big prize. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Sarah O'Brien. One of the problems with online gaming, as with anything on the net, is finding the games that you like. And one way to do that is to hang out on the gaming networks or the various gaming communities. And one of the biggest of those is Microsoft's Internet Gaming Zone. And we've got it up on the computer here. Uh, Adam, why don't you show us the different games we can play inside the zone? We have a wide array of games. We actually have a relationship with LucasArts for their Star Wars titles, like so Jedi, Jedi Knight, Knight X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter. We also have card and board games. The board games, some of them are from Hasbro, and some of them are actually free on the Internet Gaming Zone. You download the uh, components you need for the client. So the typical checkers, chess, go, backgammon, yep, reverse, yep. scrabble. Yep. Okay, card and then games. Card games as well. You'll notice there's you know 812 people playing so spades I see right you have, now. Yeah, over 3,000 people are in the zone right now. 800 of them are playing spades. Yep. Yep. We also have some simulations products, uh -huh. um, things like Cart Precision Racing, right. uh, as well as Flight Simulator 98. Got it. Sports. Sports. We have Microsoft Golf. Got it. Strategy. We also have uh, Age of Empires, mm -hmm. which is a Microsoft product that we shipped a while ago. All right. So let's say I wanted to play one of these games. Just pick whatever you like. Let's go into one of these areas and see what let's it's go like look to at go spades, find a game. Since there's so many people that are there. Okay. I can't believe 800 people right now are online playing space. Yep, yep. There's, there's many people that All are right. having a lot of fun. I mean, one of the things we really try to do is build a community out here. Yeah. You'll notice that, you know, we have a variety of different rooms. Some so of we have a social room versus mm -hmm. a competitive room. Right. Now, I right. see one room has 236 people playing spades. How yep. do you do that? Yep. Well, we essentially have a table metaphor that allows you to sit so down you at break a table. Them up with exactly, people. Okay. exactly. And again, like I said, one of the things that's important is getting people to come back to the, mm -hmm. the gaming site you're talking about. And so we have uh, 80 tournaments that go on every week up in the Spades area. So you see every day, almost every time. So this is sort of time. managed by the zone folks who right. set up these times and you can come to those right. sessions. Exactly, exactly. 
So one other aspect of the Internet Gaming Zone, other than the games that you get for free, uh -huh. are retail matchmaking, which allows you, if you've gone out and bought a CD, to find other people that are interested in playing that same game. Okay, say I have a CD on my PC at home, but I want to play online with somebody else who owns the game. Help me find another guy who's looking for a partner. Exactly. Okay. We, we try to make it really easy for people to find. And so again, we have you know expert lobbies where we have a couple of people battling that. It looks like 160 people okay, that are and this playing. This would be in the for Age of Empires. Age for of example. Empires, exactly. And again, we have tournaments and also ladders that allow people to you know figure out where uh -huh. they stack up. So um, this essentially is one, an example of those retail matchmaking games. All right, now all these games you were showing us up until now, I can play for free. I'm yep. not charging, you just have yep. to put up with looking at the ads, but yep. it's free yep. other than that. Yep. Now you do have, you just started with some premium games, right, where I do have to pay to play. We just, uh, we have a game up now that's called Fighter Race, which is a World War II fighter pilot game mm -hmm. that allows you to play in the same arena, the same sky with 100, 150 other people. So you can either play every person for themselves or in teams. Mm -hmm. um, again, you know, we have a variety of different arenas that allow people to, as they get better, compete with people. So, so you we can have start out in boot camp, boot camp so you get blasted out right, right away. Right, and then move center. up in some, we have some people in the officers club, no one yet uh, just, uh -huh. you know, is in the general's environment. So um, this essentially is a game that's designed to kind of take advantage of the internet and massively multiplayer. Mm -hmm. So it's really fun and a lot of people enjoy, you know, getting into, you know, playing with their friends up there and, you know, allowing themselves to you know, get on the, the ladders, play in the tournaments, and yeah. win games. And you said you're building communities here. I see you do have a chat button, so you can actually mm -hmm. get out of this and get into a Certainly. chat room, just yep. talk with yep. guys just after a game or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, now to get into Internet's, uh, I mean, Microsoft's Internet Gaming Zone, do you need to be on MSN? Do you need to be an IE4? No, we essentially support, at this point, IE302 uh -huh. and IE4. You can have any internet provider. It doesn't have to be MSN. Okay. And our next big version, the whole focus of the version, is going to be Netscape support. And so okay. we expect that Q1. All right, thank you very much, Adam. Thank you. All right, well, many online games are just adaptations of PC-based games. They're redesigned, they're ported to the online environment. But now with net-based games becoming so hot, new games are being designed from the ground up just for real-time internet play. One of those is Subspace, though this is a game you actually could buy in a box, right? You that's take right. home on a CD-ROM. Yes, but you play it online, that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what's the point in the game, and what's it about? Um, it's a fairly simple uh, overhead shooter. You just get in and uh, blast other people. Uh, it was, uh, <laughs> All right, so you're the plane in the middle, uh -huh. and it's some sort of big dog fight. It's like Asteroid. You yeah, there's a huge dog fight. You get hundreds of ships flying around. Uh, and, and how many guys can be playing at the same time here? Uh, you can have up to 200 in really? one arena. Yeah, in this arena, we've got 65 at the moment. All right, now we're playing uh, just on a 28.8 modem here, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the action's pretty fast. How do you manage that? Well, the whole game was designed around the Internet. Um, one of the reasons we chose to have ships in space is mm -hmm. we can do lots of prediction. Because it's Newtonian physics, you uh, don't get people jumping left and right. I have to clever. apply thrust to get around it. So uh -huh. it's a good way of overcome, overcoming latency. All right, pretty sneaky. All right, so let's play a little bit of the game and see what goes on here. Now, uh, is it just you against the other 199 guys? Uh, no, I've got a whole bunch of teammates. Uh, these guys uh, in yellow up at the top left, they're my teammates. Uh, how do they become teammates? Uh, we assign you to a team when you first join in, or oh, if okay, you want. Okay, so I walk in, I'm yellow, there's a bunch of other guys are yellow there on my squad. That's right. Or you can create your own squad. How and do that, you do that's that? what a lot of people do. It's the simplest typing in a number. Uh, we have frequency numbers like radio channels. And when you join that, you, uh, everybody on that okay. team is on the same team. Now, can you actually communicate then? Yep, you can communicate privately to each other as well. And that's, that's how most of the expert players play. They oh. have their own personal squads. Which uh -huh. And they say, look, I'll worry about that quadrant, you worry about this quadrant. Exactly. All right, now what's going on bottom left? Is that actually the chatting that's uh -huh. going on yep. now between the, the players? Uh, these guys are all chatting to each other, so I can say. You've got to be shooting oh, down okay. guys, not getting shot and chat at the same time. That's right. Sometimes you need quite a few fingers at once. All right, now what are all these little walls and structures? Are they just uh, things to hide against, uh, behind, so nobody can shoot you down? They're, uh, they're to hide behind in this zone. They're, they're, they're just covered to bounce off, to maneuver around. However, in some of the other zones, you can build bases inside and around them. Uh -huh. We've got capture the flag games, and hmm. you have to defend certain areas, which is, becomes your turf on the map. Now, you've got this sort of Death Star type thing, right, where you can actually get onto another guy's plane and make it twice as powerful? Uh-huh. Uh, you can get onto anybody on your team uh -huh. and jump onto the back of them. So he's become another gun on his plane, if you right. will. Right. Uh, now he's a turret. He's flying. I'm, I'm a turret. So I can fly out the back. And you can ah, have you can okay. have up to 20 turrets on one ship, which makes these huge Death Stars flying through yeah. the zone. And you get lots of fighters coming in to kill the big ship. All right. Now you can actually cloak your ship and sort of become a stealth fighter, right? Certain ships can. Certain ships have the ability to cloak. Other ones can go fast. Other ones have got bullets. OK. So why don't you always cloak then so nobody can see you? Well, it's, uh, each ship's got its own characteristics. So for instance, this ship I'm flying is very, mm -hmm. very fast. Uh, 
right. another ship has the cloaking device, so he could okay. be sneaking up behind me and I couldn't So you can see choose him. what kind of plane you want to be flying depending on your your strategy or who the other guys are or That's whatever? That's correct. Yeah, each right. ship's got its own strengths. The bottom right. right, is that a map of the whole fighting zone there? Uh-huh. I can bring up a bigger map. Um, I'm the yellow dot there on the uh, far right, so you can see just wow. how big the zones are. They're pretty huge, and I'm moving very slowly. Okay, now... Uh, I understand you actually ship the server sort of operating system with this so I can now create my own game using your engine? That's correct. Although we have uh, big, big servers located that we make that you can always play mm -hmm. on, uh, inside the game there's kind of a game construction kit that you can put your own servers up online and then anybody from the world can come and play it. So players have created uh, Subspace Soccer, for ah, example, where cool. you can fly a ship around and kick the soccer ball to each All other. All right, one more interesting point. One of the problems with these online games is you have guys who cheat in a big way. I mean, they, they do things that make it harder for other people to play. Given yeah. us a, an example of a security breach. Um, one of the major ones is trying to induce latency or lag, which is a big problem with many internet that? games. Well, you can do silly things like whistle down the phone line. Just send garbage down the line. Send garbage down, uh -huh. so then your image on everybody else's machine uh -huh. looks jerky, whereas their image is because that's coming in the download stream. Looks and what do you smooth. do about that? Well, what we had to do is we have to keep track of how many packets you've received and mm -hmm. sent to make sure they keep in sync. Yeah. But there are new security issues all the time, and so we have to keep on patching yeah. every few weeks. So I can buy subspace or I can download a free demo. You can download from the a free demo from the website. Thanks a lot. No problem. All right, one of the traditional computer games that was successfully translated for the internet environment is Magic the Gathering. This game, in fact, started out as a card game, but now it is one of the most popular games on the web. Deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, a tournament is underway. Hundreds of participants concentrate intensely on their game, which is played not with a mouse or a joystick, but with a deck of cards. The game is called Magic the Gathering, and Microprose hopes to translate its popular success as a card game to the cyberspace of the Internet. What we were able to do with the Internet version of the game was create arenas or areas for people to gather online, to talk to each other, to find a large pool of players, people that would challenge them, people that would have different playing styles than, than them that they may not be able to meet otherwise in their you know, local geographic area. Magic is a complex, challenging game with myriad ways to gain points by attacking opponents, defending one stash of characters, and by casting enchantments or curses. But as in any card game, players can also get hints from reading each other's body language. There are a lot of subtleties in the paper game. Eye movements, expressions on somebody's face, comments they make to you, the way they put down a card. All these communicate all kinds of things that you can't get through on a computer screen. So to make up for those things that you and I automatically can communicate through a glance, we had to break down the gameplay so that it was simplified. The computer version of the game keeps track of each side's points so that players can concentrate on their strategy. The player's own hand fills the lower half of the screen while the opponent's cards are in the upper half. For social communication, Magic's internet version has multiple message and chat functions, including a large arena chat room for hundreds of players. While Magic players love getting together, they love getting together for a reason, and that is to find the next great challenge. The great thing that digital technologies, the computer, the internet bring to all this is it widens that. So you're always going to be able to find somebody who can challenge you even more. Still, the two versions of Magic, physical and virtual, seem to offer different kinds of enjoyment to its players. I think they're completely separate. Um, they obviously are the same game, but uh, it's a different kind of experience. Like. When we have people over to play the game, we get pizza and make it like a, a somewhat, you know, like coming over to play poker, you come over to play some magic. The possibility of being able to play each other on the computer, have tournaments on the computer with each other, I think it would be very exciting and neat. I mean, besides able to, another way of keeping in touch, but to do something that, you know, remind us of what you know, one of the times we enjoyed spending together with friends and stuff. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Sarah O'Brien. Well, the usual computer game, whether on your PC or online, involves artificial or fictional characters, maybe managed by the human players, but there's a new web-based game called Underlight that pits the real you against a real opponent. 
Tell us about what the world of Underlight is like. What goes on here? Uh, it's a game where many thousands of people are playing together, and every person you meet is a real person. There's mm -hmm. no fake people, no artificial intelligence or anything like that. And there's a giant story going on that everyone basically participates in. And there's something you're trying to accomplish, depending on the circumstances. Right. And the point is you can use a variety of skills, not just killing another guy and blowing him up, but social skills, political skills, et cetera, to get what you want. That's right. And that's really what I'm here for. Um, All right, I'm so what's a, going on in the game now? I'm, I'm in a meeting with uh, my lord and master, the, guardian, the, uh, the ruler of my house. Okay. I'm actually a guardian. I'm one step below him on the social hierarchy. And he summoned me here and has told me Sounds that. Sounds like fraternity row. Sort of, sort of okay. like that, right. So... I'm going to tell him greetings, Lord. You gotta be nice to him. Huh? I've gotta be nice to him. Okay. How can I help? He's actually told me that I have to uh, uh, accomplish a mission here. Okay, and he's another real guy in the game who's earned the right to be the Lord of the he's House. He's another real person here. Okay. Um, and there's actually other players you can see running in and right. out of here. So, I mean, so. you really respect him because he earned the right to be in charge of this house. Absolutely. Okay, so he says what? Uh, I have a mission of the utmost secrecy and importance for you. I think I may have been followed. So quickly take this codex, which explains your mission, and report back to okay. me. Okay. So I'm going to read this codex, which is uh, a little message. Your mission. And it says, One of our sacred artifacts, the Dreaming Stone, was stolen from our vaults. The Council of Rulers believes that a spy from House Kalincher was involved. Do whatever you must to identify the spy and report back to us. All right, so you've got your job. Hmm. How do you go do it? Um, I'm going to run across here and see if I can get to House Kalencher. And, okay, find and out. But they're, but they're enemies, supposedly. They, right? are, they are our enemies. So they might try to kill you or whatever. They could very well do that. Okay. Fact, I hope they won't. And there they are, actually. Uh, here's another few players. And they're blocking you from crossing the bridge to their yeah, house. Yeah, and I better say something quick or they're going to start attacking yeah, me. Yeah, most games you just blow them up, right, yeah, before he blows you up. We're not blocking you normally, but, okay, but in this game, people are going to really, they're going to try and play a negotiate. story. Negotiate. Exactly. Yeah? Okay. So, uh, there they go, halt, only those of House Kalinger may pass. So uh, okay. I say, wait, I wish to parlay. <laughs> parlay meaning? Uh, give them something to pass. Okay, so you want to make a deal, not just blow them I up. I want to make okay, a deal. You give yeah. me this, I'll give you that. Yes. Um, I'll say, uh, I'll give you a charm if you let me pass. Okay. And I'm going to go and uh, give this charm to, it looks like Charles, who looks like, I believe he's the leader. Okay. So I'm give so you're going to give that guy a charm and see if that quiets him and lets yeah, him go by. Yeah, hopefully this will, he'll let me pass and I can go on. Well, he's taken it. All right. Thank you. I will pass. All right, he lets you go. Excellent. All right. All right, let me ask you a couple of questions sure. in this game. First of all, in a lot of these games, the problem is if you're a newbie, you get on, you just get blasted right away. Absolutely. But in this game, you actually reward people for being nice to other players, don't you? That's right. It's the, it's the only way to do it and have a big social game like mm -hmm. this. And how do you reward? I mean, if you don't kill somebody, you get something? You actually gain power by being friendly to new. So you're players. motivated not to be just totally mean like in these other games. Right, you want to bring them into your house yeah. and educate them and bring them up. And in this game, if your character is really dumb and does bad things, you can literally die and be out of the game and lose all the skills you've gained. You can actually be killed in the game by the more advanced players, yeah. Hmm. It's, a, it's the highest level of social control. But then you can come back, but then you're starting all over again. That's and right, the you're starting from scratch. So it's like life. Very much all so. All right, yeah. thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Well, that's our look at online gaming. Next up, a special preview of Windows 98. And I'll be back in just a moment with my pick of the week. Every version of Windows comes with new and improved utilities that make the operating system more usable. Windows 98 is no exception. Let me show you three of my favorites. The first is Drive Converter. This will take your FAT16 hard drive and convert it to a FAT32 hard drive. That just makes it more efficient, especially if it's a really large hard drive. If you don't know what FAT32 is, you can click on the Details button and get the skinny on FAT32. The next utility is Scheduled Tasks. This is just like the System Agent utility that you had to pay for in Microsoft Plus. This one is free and it works the same way. You can click on any of these items and you can change the schedule of basic uh, maintenance uh, on, your hard, on your hard disk and other parts of your computer. You can also add your own programs and files in here. You can basically have anything happen at any time. Kodak Imaging is a really neat uh, utility that's sort of like a Photoshop light. You can, uh, bring in faxed images or scan images and manipulate them right here. These are just three cool utilities that come free in Windows 98. Back to you, Stuart. Now for my pick of the week. So you've bought a digital camera or a scanner and you've started putting images into your PC. 
Now you want to use that nifty photo editing software to clean up your pictures or just get creative. Well, you'll learn very quickly this is not easy to do with a mouse. You just don't have the kind of fine control that you get with a pen or pencil. Now, professional graphic artists who use computers use pen tablets, but these used to be either very expensive or with limited functionality. But now Wacom has come out with a very impressive low-cost solution to really taking control of graphics work on your PC. This is the new Pen Partner, and let me tell you why I like it. First of all, it's inexpensive, less than a hundred bucks. But more than that, it does so much. The pen is pressure sensitive, so you can write lightly, or if you press harder, you get a darker stroke. The pen comes with a smart eraser. If you want to erase something, just use the virtual eraser as you would with a pencil. Also, since the Pen Partner tablet is sensitive, even when the pen is above the tablet surface, you can use the tablet to trace an image into your computer, just like that. It comes with a side switch, which can be programmed for double-clicking or right mouse functions. The Pen Partner comes bundled with two great pieces of software from Corel, Photo House and Print House. Photo House has a full photo editing suite. Print House lets you create cards, calendars, etc. The software comes with a large library of photos and clip art. After using the most natural input device of all, a pen, you just may never go back to your mouse again. It's the Pen Partner from Wacom. That's it for this edition of Computer Chronicles. We'll be back here again next week with more of the same. If you want any more information about anything you saw on today's show, please check out our website at cnptv.com. That's it for this week. I'm Stuart Chaffe. We'll see you here next time. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by SoftSource Incorporated, publishers of Pro One Software, educational software for young adults, and by Z Auction, the live online shopping experience. Additional funding from PC Connection and Mac Connection, the catalog and online superstore with PC and Mac products, toll-free technical support, and overnight delivery. And by Windows Magazine, delivering desktop, enterprise, and internet computing news, reviews, features, and how-tos for a Windows world because the world runs on Windows. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic. Next week on the Computer Chronicles, the Digital Living Room. We'll take you to Laguna Niguel, California for the first ever conference on the future of the wired, interconnected home. See the new technologies that will interconnect all the appliances in your house and let everyone in your home share computer and internet resources. Peek into the consumer technology of the next decade with insights from industry observers like David Corsi, Bob Frankston, Philippe Kahn, Kai Krauss, Larry Maggot, and Mike Langberg. The digital living room of the future, next week on the Computer Chronicles. Thank you.